Thank you and welcome back. We are having a conversation on emerging markets and where you should put your money, which countries, which sectors uh, across the globe, not just in Kenya. And uh, I know we had mentioned about Mansa X, which everyone is talking about in town, but we'll talk about that later. For now, tell me what risks are available if uh, are there, if, for example, I decide to invest in some of these emerging markets. So one of as exciting as emerging markets are, there are inherent risks that investors should be aware of. And one of the biggest ones is currency stability. I mean, over the last few years, we have seen some of these, we have seen some of the hot countries that everyone wants to pile their money into have an issue with um, their currency stability with a number of them hitting all time lows against the dollar, mm -hmm. which is a risk if because you have to invest in their country using their currency so your returns can be diluted based on that which countries are these so the turkish lira for instance which last year lost almost 78 percent of its value mm. i mean that in itself even if the market did wonders <laughs> just <laughs> just from the aspect yeah. of the currency yeah you would have made a net negative return mm. yes any other yeah so the indian rupee as well has gotten to all-time lows over the last few years. We have the Mexican peso that also got to all-time lows, the Brazilian real as well. So these are factors that affect your returns when investing in such a, in such a, in such a country. Yeah, but uh, apart from these currency risks, are there other risks? Yes, so another one is volatility. And based on lack of political stability the, to the same way that um, the developed countries have, there do arise political stability issues in these countries. We mentioned Brazil earlier, but there are others. For instance, uh, Turkey in recent years, I mean, we had the attempted coup a couple of years ago. So these are factors that affect the returns when investing in markets. And this volatility, we can see it from the performance of the MSCI index over the last few years. I mean, last year alone, while the S&P gained 27%, the MSCI Emerging Market Index, which tracks 85% of market capitalization in the 25 emerging market countries, lost 5% of its value. And if you look back five years... And, and this is attributed to political risks? This is attributed. So one of the biggest issues that happened last year that affected um, returns in the emerging market was China, which was a big contributor to the emerging market index, the government decided to crack down on big companies because they decided they want shared prosperity. So a company should not become too big. And that affected a huge part of the returns in their market. With the Hang Seng, which is the Hong Kong Stock Market Exchange Index, losing about 13% of its value. Mm. Yeah. Please exchange, uh, explain this move by the Chinese government for, to, work, to equalize prosperity. Yeah, so <coughs> ironically it started with probably the best known uh, Chinese company globally, which was Alibaba, when Jack Ma decided to speak out against the Chinese Communist Party, indicated to them, to the political uh, class that the business class is starting to think they're too big for their boots. Mm. So we need to cut them down a peg. And they didn't just stop with tech companies. I mean, they went across the board, every single sector, in introducing new legislation to curb uh, the growth of these companies. And that affected, in, in a wide sense, the performance of the Emerging Markets Index. Yeah. yeah. So I hear currency risks, I hear political risks uh, yeah. as possible uh, in terms of uh, curtailing my investment. Yeah. Although that story from the Chinese is not uh, um, appealing because it means then that uh, if I invested in a company in China mm -hmm. and then it really grows, yeah. um, my investment can be watered down over, the, over time. Yes. I mean, Tencent, which is one of the biggest uh, Chinese companies, which had grown about almost 2,000% the decade prior, um, showing good um, opportunities, providing good opportunity for entry in, in the Chinese market, um, last year lost about 20% of its value based, just simply based on that. Yeah. yeah. How can one mitigate on these risks? So diversification is, is a big one. Mm. Um, 
do, do not put once again do not put all your eggs in one basket because if the basket falls then you've lost everything yeah and this is something we're very big at in Mansa X diversification we all, we're always aware and try to keep track of what is happening not just in the markets but any political developments that may arise which may affect our returns yeah yeah and so what I'm hearing is even though there are risks there are still um, significant gains to be made yes however mitigate on the risks by diversifying across several markets yes you've talked of the currency woos across the globe uh, I heard that the, the, the Turkish lira yeah. lost 78%. Yeah. And for a moment there I thought, we are not doing so badly after all. <laughs> because the sh Kenya shilling has also been struggling over the few, uh, past few months. Um, is there a way that the weak shilling locally can affect my investment globally? Surprisingly, we, I actually believe that... Um, the Kenyan shilling has been relatively stable. I mean, last year, the currency only lost 3.5% of its value. And that, if you, if you compare it to a number of other currencies around the world, and not just emerging markets, I mean, in the emerging markets, I talked about the Turkish lira earlier, but the South African rand lost almost 9% of its value. And the Mex within the year 2021. Within the year 2021. While the case lost 3.5% against the dollar, the rand lost almost 9%. The Mexican peso lost almost 5%. And this is just in emerging markets. Even in the global, um, the developed economies, we did see currencies lose significant value, way more than the Kenya shilling in t uh, against the dollar. I mean, the euro lost 6.8%. That's almost twice what the case lost last mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so on, on, my, on my perspective, looking at things from a currency standpoint, the Japanese yen lost over 11% last year. So the Kenya shillings is, is still relatively stable. But globally, I even yeah. saw it on um, Bloomberg, CNN. Yeah. Everyone was commenting about the fall and fall of Kenya shillings. Is it because this happened over a short period of time, perhaps six, seven weeks? Yes. So the way, the way we look at, at things is over a longer period of time which allows us to have a better view of the market rather than short-term knee-jerk reactions. And that's why we always take a longer-term view of, of, of how things are performing. And if you look at it in terms of annually from January till December, the Kenya shilling was not bad off. Was not bad off. Right now, moving forward, is it in a bad place or are you hopeful that it will stabilize I where mean, it is? The central bank is actually doing quite a good job to keep it stable. Um, I believe the infrastructure bond coming up and the euro bond that is about to be floated will, will help boost the reserves, which will keep the Kenya shilling stable for a significant time going forward. Yes. <coughs> You know, you are, you are talking about the shilling so nicely and several guys seated where you are sitting have talked about it uh, falling mm -hmm. and I'm like, you, I love your confidence mm -hmm. because you have, you've said it right, you're looking at it over the long term Yes. and you're saying that over the long term we are still much better off. Yes, and where I look at it and compare it from is when I look at it and compare it with how other currencies have performed. Yeah, you are comparing time. it at a global yes. platform. Yes, and in a global platform, the Kenya shilling was one of the stable ones last year, yes. And you're still hopeful that it is going to be stable in an election year? Yes. I love your <laughs> faith, man. <laughs> I should, I should have you here every day talking about the Kenya shilling. I'm sure the CBK will be happy to hear you. Um, I want us to start uh, going towards the end of this show. Yeah. And uh, the big question would be, how can one invest in the emerging markets? Um, mm -hmm. I know you had mentioned about this Mansa X thing. And, and tell us about this, how you guys can assist someone like me um, to invest globally. Yeah, so at Mansa X, which is a, a global markets fund within Standard Investment Bank, we do have a long shot multi-asset strategy fund, which means that we do not only benefit when the market goes up, we also look at opportunities where we see a significant drop in the market. So when we're talking about some of these risks that China has had, that the Turkish Lira had, 
there was opportunities to make money as the prices was go were going down. And that's what we do at Mansa X. We'll try and find opportunities, not just in currencies, but in equities, in commodities, and in local equities as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what percentage consists of the local community, uh, local equities? So it's a discretionary fund, which means we make those decisions on a day-to-day -day and on a week-to-week -week basis. Uh -huh. We don't have a fixed percent that has to be in local equity or in local fixed income. Um, but it's something we do decide. You are being polite. <laughs> <laughs> and you're managing me very nicely. So currently, as we are speaking, what is your exposure locally? Mm -hmm. We do have a significant exposure. I mean, Safaricom has been our, in our top 10 holdings over the last year plus, I believe. And we'll still maintain um, exposure to local equities, not just Safaricom. We do have others. They haven't made our top 10 holdings, but they, they are there. I, I will like not I pursue say, that yeah. any further. <laughs> I will leave it at that. Um, uh, globally, uh, yeah. does this mean you also invest in, because you said multi-asset. Yes. Um, currencies, you do forex trading as well. Yes, we do. We do invest in currencies uh, through FX derivatives. Yes, oh. we do. Ah, yeah. okay. Um, would you be open to share your return profile over perhaps a period of one year? Yes. So last year, our return was 15.45% net of fees, which we still believe, given how volatile and um, unexpected... Th that outperformed uh, the NSC20? Yes. That outperformed mm -hmm. several bond, uh, bonds in the market? Yes, we did. Ah. Okay. Carry on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yes, we did 15.45% net of fees last year. And um, we believe going forward that we can, we can still maintain an outperformance of the, mar of the local market based on our discretionary investment strategy. <sighs> okay. That word again, discretionary. Well... Thank you very much. I think that does it for today. I will have to uh, go to the dictionary and find out what discretionary is. You have been watching Markets Today, and today I was hosting a Jesse Arua from Standard Investment Bank. And we've been talking about the global markets and how you can invest there and the risks that are available in the global markets. Uh, Jesse talk, tells me that he doesn't think the Kenya shilling has been unstable. In fact, on the contrary, compared to other emerging markets or frontier markets for that matter, we are very stable. He is still hopeful that even in an election year, the Kenya shilling would still be stable. And in fact, therefore, he does not believe that it will affect your investment globally. However, I also believe, on the other hand, that whether the shilling remains stable or not, uh, your global investment is still a better way of mitigating against such risk. Um, this has been an interesting show. I, I hope to have you again in the show, uh, Jesse, uh, God allowing. For now, we'll call it a day. And we will continue tomorrow at 4 p.m. for another edition of Markets Today. I've been your host, Odiambaramugi. 